Good morning, guys. It's uh, about 6 a.m. and I um, thought that uh, I'd sneak on downstairs while my family's still sleeping and get a little painting time in. Um, I do welcome you to my channel if this is your first time. Uh, I ask that you please subscribe to my channel and uh, you can catch all of my painting tutorials and demos. So what I've got going on here is I'm, I've kind of started this new piece, so I'm just kind of in the process right now of kind of building it out. Um, I'm not going to show the entire video because frankly, um, I got this brand new video camera. I'm still kind of getting used to it. And um, so I figured what I do is just show a small segment of me building this painting out. What I want to focus on really is kind of these larger trees here in the foreground. I want to talk about uh, and share uh, how I would paint trees with uh, that are backlit, backlit by sunlight. Um, I love that particular effect in a painting. I think it's very interesting, uh, creates a lot of contrast between the light and the shadow. And I always feel that um, good contrast in a painting is, anyway, in my opinion, one of the really top important things about putting together a composition. So, um, Without further ado, uh, I want to go ahead and uh, show you how I put together trees that are backlit by sunlight. Again, thanks for tuning in. So what I'm going to do is just start here with these trees and I'm just using carbon black and I've thinned it down sort of to the consistency of ink. I made sure that it's smooth and, and glides well using my rigger brush. And just to build out some basic limbs and branches on these trees. So if you're having a hard time getting this to, um, to slide on smoothly, then you know, just add a little bit more thinner. Um, make sure you have your brush well loaded. I, I like to roll my brush in the uh, in the paint and get it um, nice and, and even throughout the bristles. Now I'm still kind of using a little bit of that carbon black, um, and then I kind of move into a little bit more of a, of a dark green. Um, and at this point I'm adding a little bit of Indian yellow. And for the most part, we're gonna kind of add in the highlights here, and then on top of that, we'll start bringing in some of the, the darker uh, greens and, uh, and blacks. And we're trying to get that, trying to get that um, subtle impression that um, these bushes and trees are going to be backlit. Now I'm kind of bringing in some boulders and rocks. I'm not going to be spending any time painting on on these rocks because uh, this isn't go going to be a lesson on uh, painting rocks, but I did want to get that kind of built out first and establish the foundation on these trees because we're going to have a bunch of shrubbery here uh, at the base of the tree. Now I also wanted to add in, in the very far distant background, um, some foliage and uh, I'm using a small round bristle brush. This is a very old brush. I like to keep my old brushes because uh, even though they start to lose their pliability and their shape, um, they still can serve purposes I find so I end up with this one in particular, I just kind of splay it open and um, it's got a small round head so I can get some precision in, into it. Now I've mixed up a green gold and um, added a little bit of, of titanium white. And we're going to keep 
that a very bright sort of greenish yellowish color and um, really just look at doing the contours here keep a lot of your negative space a lot of that background kind of showing through and it's really just um, subtle insinuations about about bushes in the back in the far distance now I'm going to be going around my little tree here using that same green gold and um, we just want to kind of hit just around the circumference of the tree it's really more or less a silver lining we're gonna have a lot of silver lining um, as a result of of the backlight I want to bring in some basic um, rays of sunshine kind of bursting through a little bit here so um, didn't have a whole lot of paint on the brush to do that uh, I just kind of mixed a, a very simple titanium white with a little bit of ultramarine blue and it was for the most part just a dry brush technique and um, if you don't put too much on the brush then a lot of that background will still be able to be visible now going back with my small my small fan brush um, and then moving back into my smaller little um, round brush which is just a 20 over 0 so it's got a very fine head but I can really start to kind of build out some of the leafing around this bush and I'm really thinking a lot about form and shape at this point in time but again being mindful of keeping a, a lot of that um, silver lining it kind of intact and then I can you know at this point in time bring in pure black on top of the browns and the greens and really start to bring in some more shadowing so this will just take some time building out the individual leaves but uh, you know you just want to really think about having some really good variety and shape and and just keep it um, very ununiform and um, you'll be a lot happier nature's not perfect in its shape typically and so um, it'll just look a little bit more natural if you keep it fairly organic and um, be cautious not to be um, constantly creating the same forms and shapes and sizes just keep a lot of variety and that'll give it more of a realistic impression so I'm going to go back through here now and begin to add more of that silver lining and and you'll see me in a moment I'm going to kind of add a little bit more to my uh, sun rays in the back and that's going to sort of drown out a little bit of some of the bush which I'm going to have to rebuild back in again so you'll kind of see me playing with this bush back and forth a little bit and this is where I I need to kind of reintroduce a little bit more of that bush because I, I did add a little bit more to the um, sun rays and a little bit more of that haziness so I'm just going to build back in with my pure carbon black and um, and I'll, I'll uh, move on to the rest of the tree and I'll end up coming back to this bush and just kind of playing with a little bit more until I'm satisfied. It's really just a lot oftentimes just trial and error and sometimes I like something that I do and sometimes I don't and if that's the case I'll just work it a, a little bit more again but just try not to play around too much with it um, and mess around too too much because you'll ultimately kind of get unhappy so here I'm just kind of introducing a little bit more of, of some branches and tiny little um, tiny little limbs and so forth that we can oftentimes see at the, at the base of these trees and then I'm kind of just doing some layering here where I put dark and then light on top of the dark and dark on top of the light and 
that can really start to begin to form um, a little bit of depth into the painting. So I'm going to move on now and with my fan brush I'm just going to begin to stipple on a little texture, some leafing, a little bit of different shapes and clumps of, of, of leaves that we'd see in the canopy. And as I begin to do this, I'm really kind of thinking a lot about, um, again, the, the form and the shape and, uh, and also be mindful of my background because I don't want to end up covering off an awful too much. Uh, I, I like what I did in the background and I don't want to destroy too much of it. So I'm, I'm really kind of looking at my negative space here. Now, obviously, the light source is coming from the right, so I'm kind of thinking about how everything to the right of the canopy is going to, to be a lot lighter, uh, lighter yellows and greens. And, and as I kind of move to the center, it gets a little darker subtly. And, and then by the time I move over toward the left side, it may get just a little bit lighter again because we're going to begin to create that sort of silver lining around the circumference of this tree as well just like it, just like we do with the bush so i've mixed you know a little bit of uh indian yellow and i've got some sap green that i'm using and um and then i'm just pl playing with different levels of saturation and desaturation but i'll save the the most saturation for the right side of the, of the tree at the very end. So just kind of starting a little bit more dark, more mid-tones. And then using my small brush, I can really begin to form out these trees. So I like to start with the larger brush, like the fan brush, and I can get some primary uh, large clumps in. And then I can move to this smaller brush. It uh, gives me a little more precision and accuracy and a little more control. And I'm really just trying to think about the, uh, the different forms and shapes that I want to create here. Now on top of all that, I can kind of begin to look at uh, some of those regions where we'd have the deepest shadows and bring in some, some just pure black at that point in time. And then now around that, I can begin to use my rigor brush and start to kind of form a, a little bit more branches and, and tree limbs. For the most part, I can just um, sort of repeat what I just did here. And then I, once I get these established, I can really start to adjust some of the shapes and adjust some of the colors a little bit more. It's really just a matter of, of getting it worked in right now. And I'd recommend using a small fan brush like the one I have right here. It's a very tiny head and um, it's large enough that I can get some good coverage, but it's not so large that I lose some of the control that I need. So it's a very handy little brush that I, I find I use quite often. And so I'm just kind of creating a lot of interest here. I'm adding lots of different um, colors and uh, different different shades of greens and yellows. And that really just kind of, just again, helps to um, establish a good pattern of colors and, and some, some interest to the view, to the viewer that would be, uh, you know, to the eye that they'd see. So, so I'll just keep kind of keep coming back and forth and working on these, on these trees here and um, kind of filling them out a little bit more and I step back and I I kind of look at the overall picture but again make sure not to kill too much of your background in this case I didn't you know I wanted to have um, I wanted to make sure that I had some good overlapping and, and putting these trees you know in the foreground you're gonna obviously really tuck back those those distant mountains and the distant forest as well but um, 
I'm just trying to be mindful of looking past the the uh, foreground and, and looking at the background and just how much I want to cover. In the past I've ended up covering too much because I wasn't paying attention and that's always a disappointment if you have something you've worked on and you and you've lost it and um, and so I've just learned the hard way over time that kind of keep in mind the entire overall picture and um, and you can make determinations of what you want to still allow to peek through and what things you are comfortable covering up because we do need to create that illusion of distance and um, part of that's achieved through um, through painting objects in front of other objects, making sure those objects in the distance are oftentimes cooler and softer and hazier and and a little bit less defined and by moving toward the foreground you're oftentimes going to create objects that are warmer in nature using warmer colors and um, and deeper darker richer colors a little bit more um, saturated colors and all these little things can really help to begin to create that illusion of distance and depth so I've mixed together a yellow um, some of that Indian yellow but also a little bit of doxazine purple and since those are complement colors it ends up creating this really beautiful um, sort of dark uh, yellow almost um, a dark ochre color and uh, it really helps to gray out that color it helps to desaturate it and uh, so that's what I've kind of mixed together and began to put around uh, that right side of the canopy so it's really just a matter of going back and forth and uh, building out a little bit more at a time and um, and then using my smaller brushes to bring in accuracy and, and better shaping. Specifically with these leaves on the outer rim of the, uh, of the canopy, you want to kind of take your time and, and uh, really kind of stipple on those so that um, it does create some nice, some nice shapes and patterns for you. Now, kind of coming back now with uh, with pure um, sap green. Uh, I've not mixed it with anything else. I'm just adding sap green on top of that. It kind of bring beginning to bring in a lot more of the dark shadows to the tree. And since these trees are going to be back backlit, um, it's really going to be a lot of silhouettes. And uh, so naturally, the the interior portion of the tree is going to be much darker, and then the exterior sides are going to be certainly more um, more silver lining, and that will help to give that illusion that we've got this sort of sun glow that's um, burning behind the trees and um, creating these beautiful effects. Now I'm coming back with pure carbon black now and I'm kind of hunting out some of the areas that are going to have the deepest shadow and sort of establish those in and I'm just jumping around. I, again I'm looking beyond the shape, I'm looking at my negative space and allowing a lot of the negative space to show through. Now at this point I come back to start kind of reworking this bush again. I kind of dropped it for a bit to establish the rest of the trees, but uh, now I want to kind of bring it out a little bit more full, get it a little bit darker, and all this again will help to serve to push that little mountain, mountainy forest a little bit further into the background to create that illusion of depth. I've mixed a little gray here using umber and ultramarine blue. And we can start to kind of paint out these trunks. These trunks will sort of have a silver lining as well. Uh, later on, I'll come back with my oil palette. This is all being done in acrylic, but I'll bring out my oil palette and I will finish off these trees um, by 
creating some nice glazes. I'll use Liquin and, or Galkid, um, and I will, um, you know, begin to bring in a little bit more of, of glow and um, really brighten up some of these, some of these highlights here. And, and um, I won't show that in this particular painting. Um, I just wanted to mo more or less show how I'd put together getting most of it done in acrylic. And then, um, as usual, I like to finish off everything by introducing oils and that's sort of the cherry on top. Acrylics, uh, as I've mentioned in the past, they do tend to, to, to uh, dull out by a few shades darker uh, as they dry. As that, as that water begins to evaporate, they, they do tend to darken unless you just add your colors very thick. Um, so when I bring back oils, so I don't have that particular problem, so I can pretty much apply the color and that color will stay as it appears wet, it'll stay that color being dry. So now I'm um, gonna come back in with a little bit more shadows on the tree again, get it a little bit darker. But this begins to really kind of allow that warmth and uh, some of that sun glow and creating that illusion. Come back and begin to now reestablish some of the branches that I've painted over. I want to kind of bring those back in and um, have some of those kind of poking out and around the tree so that uh, it just adds some some more variety and and really um, removes that perfection since you know again we don't have perfection in nature and um, things are oftentimes lopsided and out of balance and there's lots of variety and so always seek for that variety um, I'm coming back now and what I've done is I've mixed together a um, I've used my gesso and so this is acrylic gesso and I've kind of mixed a little bit of um, cad yellow into it and I'm starting to dot on with my palette knife, thar kind of thick um, little stippling effect of, of individual leaves. Um, the reason I like to use my titanium white um, gesso is because, you know, it's thicker than standard um, acrylic titanium white and um, it has more pigment and because of its thickness and that pigmentation um, when I when I kind of stipple it on with my paintbrush or my palette knife um, it really stands proud it's you know it's um, it's not flat on the surface it really kind of pops off the canvas a little bit and and by keeping its shape um, and keeping its its color it tends to uh, really be dominant and uh, this will be sort of the most saturated, the most bright of the sun glow that we're going to be seeing uh, on this silver lining around this tree. And I'll also do the same mixture where I take gesso and a little bit of my um, sap green and, and create kind of a, a nice lime green color that uh, I can also stipple on as well. And then I'll just kind of go around again around the circumference of the tree. Now I've added it to my palette knife is what I've done because um, it's just a lot quicker for me to use my palette knife as a palette and I can just scrape off little globs of my paint right from the palette knife and that way I'm not having to go all the way back down to my to my palette to reload and I'm having to reload quite often so it's just a nice little trick that um, can speed things up a little bit. I'm going to also do the exact same thing around our around our bushes um, adding greens and yellows and just dotting these things on and uh, when I come back with my oil paint I'll do the, the exact same thing um, with with oil 
and it has uh, kind of a similar effect where um, it'll stand off uh, kind of three-dimensional it'll be proud it'll kind of pop off the canvas and um, doing that just because it, it is such thick paint. And so now we can really kind of start to see this uh, effect really begin to take shape now. And um, this is how we can really kind of achieve that illusion that we've got these backlit trees. So it, it kind of creates a very beautiful, unique effect, I think, to a painting. And um, hopefully you can, you can give it a try and have some good success, but it, it is a, a very effective uh, way of, uh, of a creating this effect. So now I can kind of come back now and begin to re, kind of um, really finish off a lot of what I'm trying to do here and I'm kind of coming to the refining stage now. I'm just kind of adding some final touches at this point in time. All right, well that's more or less how I would try to put together trees that are backlit by, by a sun glow. And I hope that was um, informative and help for, helpful for you. Um, what I'll probably end up doing, because um, this has all been done so far in acrylic, is when I complete the rest of the painting, um, I'll come back uh, and bring in my oil palette and I'll start to uh, really come with some glazes and bringing a lot of vivid colors and, and really looking to really augment my shadows and my highlights a little bit more in certain areas. So that's going to be about how I would finish this out. So again, I appreciate you uh, tuning in. I hope that was helpful. And uh, until next time, thank you.